good afternoon and welcome to Weatherby. Whenever Annabelle and myself head to Leeds, it's always blustery. When we first saw the G80, it was blustery that day, and that was north. Starting to see a trend, but that just doesn't detract from these beautiful cars. We welcome the Genesis G80 electric. I'm Ben Quirk, welcome to Planet Auto. If you're after a premium saloon, well, you can't go far wrong with this. The new G80 electric. It's got a 323 mile range. It's got 800 volt architecture and refinement. Well, that takes me back to the old school and a price tag that might surprise. But even when you do option it up left, right and center, I think the top mark is around 80 grand. Compare that to say a German luxury saloon. If you like this type of video, why not subscribe to the channel? You just hit the button on the right hand side. It's free and you'll get an alert every time we upload a new video. Also, if you do like the video, why not give it a like? It all helps and it means we can get more cars. Thank you. You can get a petrol, a diesel or an electric. It pulls 0 to 60 in under 5 seconds, 370 PS. And yes, it's got the levels of refinement that we're used to. There's virtually no sound in the cabin regardless of the weather. And that says something, especially for an electric car. Because when you think about it, if you've got a petrol car, you've got the noise of the engine that drowns out any of the external sound. But in something like this, it has to be refined to a level that you can't hear cars passing you, let alone any of the noise that the vehicle makes itself. And in case you're wondering, yes, it does get a touch louder when it's going at slower speeds for safety. And the other thing is, it's tech loaded. Automatic lights, LED, matrix technology, safety left, right and centre, including pedestrian bicycle detection, adaptive cruise, AEB, pretty much everything you expect from Hyundai's premium brand. Yeah, and in case you're wondering, that's what Genesis is. Well, I think the sunglasses have run their course. Yes, it looks like a G80 petrol. But there are a few things that are different. This new grille, dynamic. Now you look at it and think, Where's the charging point? If you've noticed, there's a slight tint here. So this Diamond S styling houses the charging port. 10 to 80% in around 20 minutes. Most of the electric vehicles right at the beginning were all radical and had to stand out and change the future as it were. Whereas now manufacturers are thinking, actually people want something that looks like a car that just has electric functionality. And I think Genesis have hit the nail on the head. Lovely curvature. The mini bulges in the bonnet. Even the shaping around the lights. It's not overdone. Simple, elegant design language. There's nothing that's like, grrr, arg. You know, you've not got massive air intakes. Everything's just subtle. And it just fits an executive saloon so well. And there's also one feature that really grabs me. Ours has got a solar roof. And one thing I just can't get my head around is the fact that it can just sit there parked in our sporadic weather conditions and add nearly 700 miles of range over a year. That's really clever thinking. Now it looks like it's got flared arches, but in fact it hasn't. It almost flows to the center. The shaping here, all this decreases drag, it makes it more efficient. I suppose it's what you call a very unique design language. And when it comes to convenience, you've got cameras and sensors pretty much all over this vehicle. Cameras under the mirrors that display in the cluster, 360 camera and parking sensors. It's also got blind spot detection. You can actually see it in the heads up display. The chrome strip along the bottom reminds me of Dorothy. And that was an area of car that was, well, money wasn't an object. And just look at the way it's put together. For example, the size of the front calipers. You know damn well that it can go because it's got the 370 PS dual motors. But it's reassuring to see that it's got the brakes to match. Genesis have, well, it's such a hard task introducing something like a premium car to a luxury market that's dominated by Germans. On that note, let's take a look at the side. Keyless entry and power folding door mirrors, plush materials interesting inserts it's just all so premium stepping in wow now don't get me wrong it's not all luxurious trims i mean for a start this hard plastic actually no that's soft as well yeah it's quite hard to find a hard plastic in here nope 
that. This. No, 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 that's soft too. Okay. Yeah, there's your hard plastic. And yes, you do get a grab handle. And I've got a fully electric seat with memory functions on the steering wheel and on the seat. Where do you start? The colour scheme. Yeah, it's not going to suit everybody, but I think, once again, it looks rather elegant. It takes me back to a time when well, interiors were finished to a level of quality that was a rather prestigious house interior. Everything just feels so good. It's beautifully crafted. Rotaries, as far as the eye can see, and even the recesses on the buttons. I just hope they get the recognition they deserve. Moving from something that you've depended on for the last 20, 30 years, you know, Mercedes, BMW, and Lexus, and the UK market, well, it's a hard one to tackle. But with this level of quality, tech, and construction, it really shouldn't be. I've driven a lot of cars now. I've seen Hyundai and Kia get better and better and better. So it makes perfect sense that their premium range is gonna be pretty damn outstanding. And it is. The seats are supremely comfortable. They're finished to a level that you rarely see. The biggest challenge for me is telling you something I don't like. Very clear cluster with lots of information that we'll touch on when we're doing the driving. But the infotainment screen, you've got navigation and proper buttons. Powertrain, oh, very easy to operate. Literally, this rotary here. Reverse, neutral, drive, press the center button for park. Adjustable seat belts, cup holders, extra storage points, USBs, wireless charging, Trizo, chunky, strong stalks. Look at the quality of them. Finishes yet again. Lovely armrest that's wide enough for you and your passenger. But if you feel under here, there's a recess button. 12 volt and storage points. At six foot three, I've got absolutely no problem. Leg room, yeah, decent. And that still leaves a colossal amount in the rear. We've got a footrest and it's a two pedal system as it's an electric car. There's also a release down here for your bonnet. And in case you're wondering, it's a Lexicon audio system. And don't get me started on that. It has all types of settings, including opera halls. You can set whether you're in the audience, on the stage, etc., etc. But of course, it's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, satellite navigation. It's responsive. It looks great. And it's very simple to use. And also, you can set your car settings. I do like the fact you can have ambient noises in the cabin too. We do have electronic lumbar adjustment and massaging seats. You can really see the aerodynamics, the flared rear wings, and that gives it a prowess. Let's take a look in the rear. Lovely long rear doors. I suppose that gives it a really executive look. Reminds you of a more limo spec. The door opens nice and wide, and it looks simplicity to get into. Let's take a look at that. We've got the configuration. There's two rear seats. We've even got rear screens. All soft touch. Blinds in the rear padded areas, luxury and premium materials. And the door card's finished at the same level as the front. Now I did mention that these start at around 66. Yes, ours is a fair bit more than that. But I'm not surprised, we've got the all singing and dancing. I mean, just look at my centre control panel. Considering the seat set for me at six foot three, I've got decent leg room and I can get my feet under the seats. And my hair ever so slightly brushes on the roof. I've got a comfortable position. There's a recess here. Now the construction is second to none. Grab handles above every door, map reading lights, even things like coat hooks here and here. It's just the finish of this one. Comfortable, supportive seats. It's luxurious, it's supple, and they're heated. We've even got a ski hatch. Yet again, storage point for the USB. I mean, just look at the finish here, the way it folds. So elegant. Tri-zone, and this is a digital display. And if we feel we need a little more room in the rear, we can adjust the seats by just doing this. You can even tip them. It's such an experience. I suppose that would be the biggest challenge for me. Do I travel in the back? 
or do I drive? Both are rewarding, but in completely different ways. And even with the sloping roof line, which gives it well, a rather sporty look, it doesn't really limit the headroom. Bear in mind, I am six foot three. We've got Isofix points, we've got airbags around the vehicle. Whenever you shut that door, the seat goes forward to maximize space for the passenger. Well, I don't really want to leave here, but I should take a look in the boot. Now I know when it comes to Genesis, I get a little bit googly eyed. But to be perfectly frank, why the heck not? I mean, I've seen this kind of thing in other premium and prestigious cars before, but Genesis do it in a slightly different way. And that really appeals. It's rather unique. So you've got the curvature here, a bit like a sharpness, and it adds a, well, an aggressive look to the rear. So you've actually got a boot spoiler that's like coach worked into the tailgate. Rather nice, that. When you stand at the rear, you can just see how the rear arches flare out. It's got a real stance to it. You can see the athletic, elegant look. It's the flow from the rear. It goes all the way right down and off the tail. You also got the reversing camera and parking sensors. And in case you're wondering where the power tailgate is, it's here. Yes, it's not the biggest boot. The bottom line is, it's an electric vehicle and you've got to put the battery somewhere. Now that seriously takes up a fair chunk of boot section. But you do have a storage point under here and this is where your charging cables are. It's perfectly fine for shopping and getting a couple of suitcases in. Let's take a look under the bonnet. And, ah, struts, lovely. It's nice and easy to see where you top up fluids. Even the engine bay smart. Wow. We've chosen the, all the best day weather-wise to go and film, haven't we? It's like, it's like yeah. driving down a flaming lake. Welcome behind the wheel of the G80 electric. So we've got 370 PS and it offers a range of 323 miles. It's so refined and quiet in the cabin, isn't it? It's beautiful, so serene. And in case you're wondering about performance, it pulls 0 to 60 in under 5 seconds. That's not bad for a pretty weighty electric saloon. And as soon as you nail it, you know it. That's 60. Steering. Well, it's nice and light when you need to manoeuvre. But when you get to higher top speeds, it weightens up, you get good feedback, and it gives you a really good driving experience. It's rather engaging. Yeah, it gives got a good sense of direction. Now bear in mind that's going to differ depending on which driving mode you're in. Ooh, an S5. Yes. Combustion vehicles aren't really a challenge in this. Before you know it you've exceeded the speed limit and I suppose that's the biggest challenge in an electric vehicle. It's, uh, it's pretty quick. It's such an experience traveling in one of these. Well, it's one of my favorite places to be, I can tell you that. Yeah, I'm not surprised, to be honest. And that's the thing about an electric motor as well, isn't it? Oh, you can't call them electric motors, can you? Because it's actually powered by an electric motor, or in this case, dual. And the batteries are laid out along the chassis, so it feels planted and sure-footed at all times. And due to its weight, it literally feels like it's glued to the road. Now, sport. Oh my word. That's fruity. <laughs> well, I say it hasn't got a boost button like GV60. But, but it sure can shift. I was going to say, you can have a bit of fun there. So it's comfortable suspension, but at the same time, it's rather engaging. It's a body roll. Oh, it's very little, isn't it? Well, as a passenger, I'm not getting any really. Well, that's good to hear. Now currently we're getting two mile per kilowatt hour. Now when I was crawling along before it was closer to, I think it was about two six. So you can economize in this. Now I mentioned it's got 323 miles of range, but you take it into the city and it's closer to 400. It'd be interesting to take this on a full road trip, wouldn't it Annabelle? Oh yeah. When we were driving at MG4, that was closer to four, but bear in mind, this is a far bigger car and it's far more tech loaded and also you need to remember we're in sport so that's not going to do it oh, that's interesting as soon as you hit eco you feel the bolsters loosen wow 
and it looks like my massaging seat has kicked in. Wow. To driving mode, you've got comfort, sport, and eco. And each time you hit the mode, the seats do something different, and you feel the pedal already itself. We've done a sterling job of taking the G80 and electrifying it, is the only thing I could think of to say. Yeah, that's pretty accurate, isn't it? Yeah. I do love that acceleration. The suspension takes it well, too. And the brakes are fantastic. Yeah. You've got great visibility. Yeah. Well, I said the B pillar is quite reduced too, yeah. so you can see behind it. But you've got the blind spot detection that shows in the heads-up display anyway. And well, the side mirrors are also dimming too. Yeah. So it's not only in the heads-up display; it's also in the mirror. When it comes to regening, well, if you put it in sport, you've essentially got one pedal driving. Also, when you back off, you can feel the regen. But with the paddles, you can adjust to whichever level you choose. The thing we've noticed as well is it charges left, right and centre. So as soon as I back off, it's straight into the blue bar. Cluster's nice and clear to read. And if you've noticed, it's almost like a 3D effect. It's like the lenses are sunk back. Adaptive cruise, as you'd expect. Nice and responsive, very easy to operate. It's not like your everyday normal electric car. For a start, I think it tops out 139 miles an hour. Drivetrain, nice and straightforward to operate. Just literally the rotary that we used to. And to be honest, I think the price is pretty reflective of the technology. If anything, it seems better value, doesn't it? Yes, it does. In a nutshell, this is a luxury saloon car that's been electrified. Yeah. Also, we don't seem to be zapping our range. Travelling at about, wow, just under 70 miles an hour, it's still showing 183, and I think we've done two or three miles to one mile. Bear in mind, we've got a few hills, so it's regening when it can. Oh, look, G. It's nice and straightforward to turn up your audio system. Instead of it being up here with the screen, it's down here. I've not noticed any of the wind, it seems to mitigate it nicely, considering it's quite blustery out there. So you've got lane keep assist, you've got AEB, collision detection, collision mitigation. The list is literally endless for this car. Think of a Kia and a Hyundai and then just add more things. I can see the lane keep assist and I can feel it too. So and we're not in adaptive. When we got in the car at Weatherby, we had about 2.1 mile kilowatt hour. And I've been in sport, comfort, eco, etc, etc, and generally just testing the powertrain. In eco mode, it's leapt up to 2.7 mile kilowatt hour. So it's not hard to make this vehicle, well, economise. Whoa. It's very hard to see. see the markings, to be honest. You look at this kind of weather and think, wow, this must be quite a challenge. But because of all the safety in the Genesis cars, I mean, for a start, we've got lane keep assist. We've got adaptive cruise, but because of the light, it's virtually impossible for the naked eye to see the actual lines because of the amount of water that's coming down. So, yeah, you might not normally put your faith in this kind of safety system, but in this kind of torrential weather, well, it's nice to have overwatch, isn't it? Yeah. I don't actually have to look at the cluster. I can just look at the heads-up display, and it gives me all the information I need. The other thing is, have you noticed you can't actually hear the weather outside? No. At it's only all. when you look out of the window and you've seen how bad it is, would you know? Well, we're travelling at motorway speeds. I can't feel any buffet left or right, and I'm not using adaptive either. It just floats around effortlessly. The G80 offers something completely different. For a start, it's an electrified saloon. It's refined, it's luxurious, and it's what you class as well, a rather premium vehicle. Well, as I would say, Ben, it's got all the bells and whistles. It certainly has, and a price tag starting at just under 66 grand. I think it's no-brainer, to be honest.